He's been trying yeah. to get jobs, so he's been getting passed up on. And I think Dusty Baker and Tony Larusa have swayed the copycat league a little bit, and that's what I was saying in the playoffs when they played against each other. I said when they played against each other that Buck's going to get hired now because people are seeing these old-school managers lead teams to the postseason because the front office, just they can do this, the stats. Like, you still need the discipline of a manager. I mean, you see that with Jace Tingler in – uh, San Diego, where he didn't have control of the room. Like, Buck's going to have control of this room, and he's going to kind of, you know, whether you hate that or like that as a player or think it's real or not, he's going to walk around and get a little bit of respect that we were having this whole wave of that doesn't matter, where, you know, uh, Boone uh, gets mad. He was never even a bench coach. Rossi, never even anything. Tingler was never a manager or, or you know, was quality control coach. Beltron was never a manager, even in a clubhouse. And that was the copycat league. And I wonder, moving forward from after Beltron, and you saw Padres go get Melvin, like I wonder if we've now spun back into, no, you need a manager who's been a, a baseball guy and has been in clubhouse and gone up the system and been a manager for a while. Do any teams still have openings? The A's. Or they hired The A's Kotze. are about to sign Kotze. Yeah, yeah, if that's not official yet. But I'm, I'm interested. And he's to see another the, of the old school ilk, so that's you know. But yeah, I'm interested to see the next team that's you know a, a postseason hopeful. What way they go? Do they go the young, don't need experience, just need to be able to like be a good guy in the clubhouse and get along with the guys, or they go, you know, Dusty Baker, Lewis, uh, uh kind of an older head, gray hair that's going to demand respect and kind of like. Because I think I think we just saw it switch. I, yeah. I was I was having that same thought process and I I, I do think and Trev you know we're probably going to land here at some point. So much of it depends on the team. Like there there's so much the ball players actually involved that are going to dictate your record at the end of the day. Like if if Buck gets sixty starts out of Scherzer and Degrom, yeah, I, I bet the Mets are going to look pretty good. If he gets twenty starts out of Scherzer and Degrom, he's not going to look so good. So. And then I was thinking about those young coaches and, you know, Rossi. I mean, Boone's kind of an interesting one because the record's incredible, but a lot of Yankee fans aren't in on him. Uh, but, like, Kevin Cash, you could put him in the crop of young coaches. Gabe Kapler, I mean, that's a that's a young guy coach. So, it's... Well, yeah, I don't really I, mean young. I, I, I think at the end of the day, like you're saying, it's a pendulum. There's a correction and there's an overcorrection. It goes back and forth. I think it's, A, being the right guy. Uh, I, if you hire a... And a gray that's disconnected. Like, I think the guys we just mentioned, LaRusse is a Hall of Famer. I know he's got his other shit that we like to make fun of him because it's easy for him. Dusty Baker's like one of the most beloved dudes to ever be in this sport. Buck Showalter, I think, is one of the most respected dudes to ever be in this sport. And so when you're relating that to the old guys and young guys, at the end of the day, almost like any job, like, find the right person. Um, well, and- to go off that, Bochi and Sosha both have said they didn't retire. They stepped right. away. Oh, they'll be back. So that's like, I, you know, Buck couldn't find a job for a little bit. I wonder if those two, if they officially say, oh, I'm ready to come back, if it's like, hey, we want you. I'm curious if, if teams are pinching pennies as much as we think they are, like not wanting to spend money, trying to save 500 grand here, a million dollars here. Maybe that was the thought process behind hiring all these young guys. Like, hey. We have a front office that's assembled. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's this is what we want our manager to do. Why do we need to pay a guy four million bucks when we can go get a young guy, who you know has been around the ba- has been around baseball, obviously knows the game. We can pay that guy a million bucks. So now we're saving two million bucks, and we either pocket it or do something else with it. I do believe like that was kind of the case, and then now we've just seen because you guys know how I feel about this. The the record is most likely going to be the record. Like how many games can a manager win or lose in a season? It's not many, if any, like the team has to go do it. Uh, but you do need someone, in my opinion, the, what makes a manager a good manager is just consistency. Like he needs to be there every day and establish what he expects from the team from day one. If you get a guy who panics during the middle of the season and you have a and you have a, a series where your team makes four errors and maybe one of them is at a crucial time and you lose a ball game. Nobody wants a manager who the next series is like 
early outs and ground balls for everybody. It's like, no, dude, you better be doing that from the get-go or not at all if you're not going to do it. Don't be reactionary. We need you to be constant. And I think when you're a young manager, there's you probably tend – and you don't have a lot of managerial experience, you probably tend to be more reactionary. And the guys like a buck who have seen everything, they're just more calming. If you're a front office who's like, hey, we are. this is what we want to do with the team. We don't need anybody rocking the boat. We need to steady the ship. And I think that's what these guys will bring. And they have to be willing now. I think this is probably the biggest caveat for Socha's and, and who else did you say? A boat she. They have to be willing, if they're going to come back in the game and be that steadying presence, they have to be willing to accept the fact that like, they are not going to be making a ton of these decisions. The decisions will be made for them, essentially. And that's, I think that's tough for some of them, to let go of that, that uh, decision-making. It's true. But you get the job, so you put up with it. Yeah. 